Welcome to another episode of the Digital Recruiter Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Nikki Wallace, founder of Hire DSM and Recruit DSM. She's been a recruiter in recruiting since 2012. She started Aerotech, like yours truly. So you know we've had a lot to talk about, and you can probably already kind of tell where this episode is going. But there's also going to be some really good stuff that we talk about that's non Aerotech related. I promise. Um, she started scientific and healthcare before getting promoted, and was recruiting and selling manufacturing and skilled trades, which is also what I was doing. So this is going to be a great podcast. I'm excited to talk to her. Uh, so then she started her own firm. She's got a family, a husband, two kids. She's doing it all. I don't know how she does it all, but we're going to learn about it today. I'm super excited to have her here. Nikki, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Clark. Of course, of course. Well, we'll, we'll all the get right text stories. <laughs> What's that? I said all the Aerotech stories, huh? Uh, there, there's going to be a, a million. And for those that don't know the lingo, I apologize ahead of time. But uh, it, it's always great. I, I I love talking to current Aerotech, but especially ex-Aerotech, especially the ones I meet across for the sure. country and kind of hearing how we all, how any recruiter got started. But the Aerotech, I almost kind of always know. I have some idea of how we got started. But why don't you just share with us, like, how did your recruitment journey get going? Yeah. Um, so I actually have a, a fun little aerotech starting or recruiting starting. Really, it's it's obviously all of what we did there. It's got us where we are. But yeah. um, I was living with my cousin who happened to be the second account manager in their office here um, in Des Moines locally. So I'm in Des Moines, Iowa, um, and I kept referring my friends to the firm. And you know, I don't think they even knew what they were doing at first, to be honest. <laughs> and they were growing the Iowa office. Um, and finally a couple of years in, um, they had a spot open up on their scientific team and they all kind of turned to me and said, Hey, like, why are you not working here? And I was like, I don't know. I keep referring all my friends, but I have no idea why I'm, I'm not doing this. So, um, I kind of a, a non-traditional path, on, uh, you know, into the company, but, uh, went through the interview process, ended up getting hired, um, onto their scientific team. Um, and it was a journey. So we were very much in growth mode when, which, I can't remember when you joined the company, but um, we had a pretty small office. I think I was maybe the 10th or 11th person um, in the, the office, the second recruiter for scientific. So um, we really just, the way I tell the story is that Aerotech kind of gave us the, you know, this is our goal and just figure out how to get there type of thing. I mean, obviously we had a lot of training and stuff along the way, but um, I always feel lucky that I entered the the company at the time that I did because I was able to really um, take my career where we wanted it. So there's kind of a core of us in Des Moines that really took off. Um, I recruited for about a year and a half and then was asked to um, move into take over our commercial division is what we called it. Um, we had somebody that was leaving the office and it was kind of scary. I didn't know what I was doing uh, kind of in that world. My dad's actually a mechanic by trade. So he's an entrepreneur entrepreneur, um, owned a lot of shops and now has a, a used car dealership. So I knew enough about some of like the tools and all of the things that go into labor and manufacturing, but, um, definitely was a, a journey for me to kind of start that up, um, and, and do that for several years before I also did engineering, um, after about four or five years doing uh, commercial, did engineering, and then they asked me to move over and start skilled trades specifically kind of the last couple of years I was there, which um, was probably honestly one of my favorites. So all the welders and machinists, mechanics, all of that. So that's, yeah, overall, that's kind of my journey. That's how you got started. I mean, it's, I, know. I, I love it. There's so many parallels. We, I didn't have the small office. We had about 800 people Like the LA office was fairly established for about, yeah, I forget years. you were in California. Yeah. yeah, I was out in California um, for for a while, and so there was a few different offices just in LA. It had, it had branched off, uh, yeah. So we had a pretty established crew, but I was always kind of jealous of like some of the offices that had like three people, five people, yes. ten people. It felt like yeah. the wild, wild west in your territory. When I'm like yeah. fighting for East LA, I'm like. I mean, you guys can kind of breathe a little bit, kind of target right. whatever you want to target and like yeah. all that stuff. So I'm sure it's it definitely a different experience. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. And I mean, like I said, we 
had great leaders in the office that really kind of just fostered. I mean, I came from an entre- entrepreneurial background. I um, kind of always said that the company gave me the opportunity to own a business without having the overhead, um, yeah. which <laughs> I probably didn't appreciate as much as now I realize having the overhead. It's like, oh, that was actually really nice. But um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, we just kind of went. And it, at that point, really, I think the contract to hire in our area was not um, a model that people were using. So it was not just talking about our brand and kind of who we are, but it was also really educating people on like, hey, why would you use resources like this versus, you know, FTE or, um, you know, hiring people on your own. So um, that has definitely changed since I've been in the game. Um, I think obviously a lot more people now are using contingent uh, workforce or, you know, outsourcing their recruiting. Um, and so it's, you know, just that has probably been one of the biggest changes. But yeah, I've learned a ton um, just about business and how are we going to grow this thing? And, you know, what do we do with our people and training and development and kind of all those things? Um, You know, when I started commercial, I think there was three of us. So it was myself. Um, We ended up having one other account manager that um, I promoted shortly after um, and then a recruiter. Um, And I think when I left, there was seven, six account managers in commercial and probably like 11 recruiters. So, 10 recruiters. So it was kind of fun to see. Um, and that was just in light industrial. So then we also had, uh, there was two of us in skilled trades with two recruiters. Um, and then obviously construction had split off as well. So it's kind of fun when I'm selling now. Um, you know, I signed a lot of the agreements that Aerotech in this market is still using. Um, so it's part of my legacy as well. So I never get mad when, when we go to bat at the same place. Um, yeah. cause you know, those are, those guys are just working as hard as we are really. So that's an interesting comment that you made. I had a post about that a month ago that really took off on LinkedIn talking about that. Like, you know, cause I work with small agency owners. I know it's ingrained in you to hit the meetings, the new meetings, yeah. all that, oh, yeah. but that's not most people out there. And I'll get the feedback like, Oh, it's hard. Or it's like my campaign, you know, like, what do I do? And I go in and there's like a bunch of, or maybe there's replies or they don't know what to say. Or I'm like, that's a potential meeting opportunity. That's like, get on the right. phone, like get a meeting set, like just right. keep going. People don't realize how persistent you have to be when you're yes. at the Aerotech, at the Robert Halfs. Like, because we're, we're getting called out every week uh, yeah. and we're just hoping it's good. Like, and, right. you know, and, and not bad, right? We don't want to get exposed. So right. that's like ingrained <laughs> in us. Uh, yes. and, and it's huge. How has that like impacted you know, you started a company a couple of years ago. Yep. Like, how has that kind of been part of the DNA in terms of yeah. you and then bringing on people? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting because it was um, kind of how I worked. Uh, era. I mean, to your point, like you didn't want to be called out, right? So um, my my journey at the company and kind of my exit to, to go into that before I kind of talk about um, that. But I actually had um, my first daughter came back from a maternity leave and I still very much had the mindset of, you know, you got to get the meetings, you got to do this, you got to cold call. So um, at some points, it kind of felt like I was getting the business growing a territory and passing off, which I loved. Um, That's what I was good at. Um, But when I came back and asked for help, I never had done that within the company for the almost nine years I'd been there. Um, I was told that I just had to work a little bit harder. And I was like, oh, well, crap, how am I going to do that? You know, it's like new baby at home, all this stuff. So um, I think I've always had kind of that, um, which, which in turn, then I, you know, after three or four months uh, coming back into my maternity leave, I was like, you know, I COVID had it, the baby was there, my spread was down. And I was just like, you know, I got to do something different, which in hindsight has been the biggest blessing because I'm where I'm at. Um, I had no no inkling at that point that I was ever going to start an agency. But I think now being on my own, it took me some time to adjust that like we don't have to have quite that many meetings and all those things to to feed um, an agency our side size. Um, You know, if I went on 15 new meetings a week, I would probably have more recs than my team could ever keep up with. So um, it's been good because I think my 
old clients that really followed me over like the past year and a half, two years. Um, they know that that's my work ethic. They know that that's how I'm going to show up is to do everything I can to fill that damn wreck. But, um, you know, and, and be a good partner to them. Um, but it's also been kind of interesting to, to level set that of like, okay, we don't have to go out and, and run, you know, 25 hours a week and then, you know, 15 and all, you know, whatever that breakdown was, it was kind of crazy some weeks. Um, so it's, it's kind of been interesting to see as an owner kind of what yeah, those numbers I mean, were. Yeah. Right. It's like all those sure numbers that too. Yeah. Yeah. All those meetings, just like, it was a lot. it's almost like sometimes it's like, you don't have time to like actually think through what you actually need to do. But no. when you're talking aerotech overhead and the spread and skill trades, our burdens felt like they were forever, like so right. high and everything, like, you remove that pressure and that stress and you're just left with the habits. It's yes. super powerful. It, totally. Like, it's so yeah. powerful. And it, I love yeah. that you brought that up, like just the efficiency that you can have. And you're kind of just like, well, it's like, you know, you, you get the, I don't know. It's when, um, I don't know, you like walk or run with a weighted vest and then you take it off. You're like, yes. wow, I'm, I'm, I'm Usain Bolt now. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? It's just like, you kind of have that feeling. It actually took me, I had to adjust my coaching because of that and realize not everyone's yes. coming from that background. Yeah. So to me, things that were so easy now, I'm like, this is a piece of cake to what I'm used to. Right. I felt mm -hmm. like the old guy being like, well, we used to walk uphill, you know, to school both ways, like yeah. the whole time. And other people were like, I didn't have that background or that pressure. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, I got to give you more yeah. context for like what you we, actually need to do. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, so as I've hired my team over the, the last couple of years, I, everybody that I brought in really for the most part has come from an agency. So I have somebody from an aerotech background, um, but then I have some people from other agencies and it is kind of funny to sit there and, and say, you know, this is where we're coming from or what this was. And then vice versa, she'd be like, that's crazy. You know, one of the gals that works for me, they didn't even know she didn't like they would, they made commission, but she had no idea like how. So it's like now we set up our commission structure on the agency side, very similar to what we had. Um, and cause I, that's all I know, like how else would you do it? Right. right. Um, and so she, for her, it's just like a whole new world. Cause she's like, Oh my God, like you're so transparent. And I'm like, well, what, a, like, how else would we do this? Like, how else would you know what you're going to make? So yeah. I think the other thing that's been interesting for me, um, is my network has really changed. So a lot of the clients that I worked for, I worked with, I mean, some of those guys, I worked with them my entire career as we were building the Des Moines office. Um, they were the first ones really to sign my, my contracts in January of last year, um, which has been cool to see. Um, you know, I kind of thought when I left, I'd just fade my, 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 um, what I always said is like, I'd fade into the sunset. Right. And nobody would even kind of remember, remember where I was. So now, you know, two and a half years later and, and all of the things going on, it's been kind of cool. Um, but one thing I think we've really started to focus on is, is not necessarily, you know, the 15 meetings and all these things, but like, Hey, who are our partners that we can work with on this, in this space? So on the, the agency side specifically, um, versus the RPO side, that like we want to work with, right? So like we don't have to work with 50 companies in the area. Um, that'd be great if we did. But for right now, it's like, who are we building relationships with and, and bringing on as clients that are really going to see us and value us as partners, not ne necessarily just like, oh, you're the fifth agency I'm going to send out these 10 recs to, right? Um, and I think that's been something I've really tried to I didn't realize it until probably a couple months in. And then I was like, oh, you like pump the brakes here. Like I could go, you know, call these 10 clients that I worked with because I had to have this massive book of business as we continue to grow. Um, but, you know, it was really hard to recruit for because they have terrible managers or whatever. And it's like, we don't have to work with those people. Um, and I really want to work with clients, um, especially on the agency side, because it is just such a there's a lot that happens with the contingent workforce. Um, so it's been really important to me as we've grown to make sure that the partners um, or the clients that we're working with, like really see us as a business partner. So it's huge. And I love that you said that, especially because 2023, I mean, if you read just LinkedIn, it's kind of doom and gloom, right? For the agency yeah. world. And it's like, it's been, it's always a grind, but this year has been yes. a lot more of a grind in the last couple of years. But I mean, you just, I mean, you told me before, I don't, you don't have to share the number if you don't want to. I mean, I'll let you do that, but you've, you've grown since last year, yeah. right? And yeah, but you've actually targeted less, fewer 
yes. clients and companies and yet grown. And that is, couldn't be any more of the digital recruiter process and method of what I'm yeah. yelling from the mountaintops all the time. Because that yes. time allocation is huge, especially in contingent. I mean, really even mm -hmm. in retained. Because like, we'll work on retained recs that are never going to close isn't fun either. That's a whole other no. batch of issues. <laughs> it's a whole it other conversation. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right? So <laughs> it's like, either way, it's just like good recs, a good time allocation. I, I, I love that your story because you're an example of that, right? Second, right, right, what, third full year, I guess now, or, or second full full year. Yeah. Um, and you're able to grow and like with that that mindset, but still having the hustle. Uh, right. I, I guess I, I, we'll talk tactical. We were what 10, 15 meetings a week was our thing. I mean, probably I think West Coast is always we a little bit 15. more laissez faire. Yeah, West yeah. Coast is always laissez faire compared to to Midwest and East Coast. Uh, but you guys had it way harder. What do you do now? <laughs> typically, yeah. What do you aim for? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm still um, the only salesperson that we have for the company. So um, I still try to maintain a high number. Just obviously we um, need to keep keep that going. But so I try to do, I actually broke it down kind of as I watched my network turn this last year. Um, I actually have a focus on, so how many meetings, like client meetings that are actually going to bring in the business and then how many partnership meetings. So um, one thing that... The power of partnerships. I never that wasn't a thing at Aerotech. Like they didn't no. even want us to pay for chamber memberships or anything like that. Um, so I I've kind of shifted that to okay. I think I try to do like eight to ten business meetings a week, which is still fairly high, um, yeah. and then try to do two partnership meetings and then two networking events a week. So um, it's taken me some time to get you know that structure because. And I'm also obviously consulting or running a business um, and being a mom and, and all the things. So, um, you know, what does that look like? But that seemed to, um, you know, that seems to give us still like enough recs coming in. We'd always love a little bit more, I think, when you're get, getting out of the gates. But um, overall, I think that's um, been a good way for me to structure that. So. Okay. It seemed like right in line with kind of what I'm seeing, like eight to 10 yeah. with what, like about half of those being maybe some active ones, active clients yep. and all that. And then half or a little bit less being new meetings and stuff like that. Yep. It kind of seems to be a good pace. And then you reverse engineer that to, all right, what can I do with LinkedIn? What can I do with automation, yep. email, cold calls, like looking at all that stuff. And then you kind of just get creative within that. Yeah. But, a really good framework and i was kind of pushing people a little bit more the air tech standard earlier but i was like yeah. i gotta work people to that a little bit um, yes and some people don't even need it to be no. honest but i love what you said about partnerships and in-person events i, I don't even I, I, it didn't even come up before to even to talk about that but we've run some calls you know in the program talking about strategic partnerships i guess what are yeah. what are some of the things that like you look for? Like what type of the partnerships that are you building? Yeah. Um, and again, kind of some of my stuff, it seems probably very unstructured because we have just very organically grown. So um, when we first started out of the gate, so kind of how, um, and then I can kind of back into this, but um, so I, like I said, I, I retired famously um, for two, two weeks. It was, is all it took. My husband says that that's why he was fine for me retiring because he knew I would not retire for long. Um, but I had some old clients and, and friends reach out to me um, and ask me to start doing some contract recruiting. Um, started doing that for, I said no. And then I, they structured the a deal and I was like, okay, I'll try this for a while, at least figure out what I want to do. Um, and then that's kind of how I got into the RPO space. So um, I was like, you know, I feel like I could do this for more people. Um, and started asking a lot of questions with old people that I'd worked with or partners that I'd had. Um, and it's kind of evolved from there. So once we, so we rebranded last uh, December to our RPO is Recruit DSM. So DSM is our airport code, Des Moines. Yeah. Um, and then Hire DSM is our agency. So um, I had not even kind of thought about partnerships at all. Um, and as we started going through this rebranding and and we were going to launch the agency and kind of all of this um, stuff with the Hire DSM name, um, a lot of people jumped onto that and we're like, oh gosh, a local agency. And and I really hadn't thought about the fact that an aerotech, for example, um, you know, you're 
my spread was always that, you know, 17 to 25,000 and all of that money was going out to Baltimore, right? So none of that money is staying in the community. Um, so it became really apparent and kind of obvious as we were having some of these conversations, like, hey, what can we do to, um, you know, be a local partner to people? Like we're probably gonna work with, especially on the RPO side, we end up working outside of our um, local Metro. Um, but so we really started trying to partner with, you know, what are the um, youth groups in Des Moines that maybe need help with resume writing or need help with um, their pipeline of folks that are going to be graduating. Like, what do they do after that? So um, we've really tried not just even from like a client standpoint, but just from a, a candidate and a client standpoint of, um, you know, who wants to work with local. Um, you know, we have a lot of big companies that are headquartered in Des Moines, which is kind of fun for how small we are compared to like a California or something. But um, so I just as we've gone on meetings and started talking to people, it's, you know, um, do we compliment each other if it's a client or like a potential, um, like there's a, a PEO um, that we've talked to of like, hey, you guys offer this, but you don't offer that, you know, can we maybe do like a shared um, kind of service to each other type of thing. Um, but then also just like, how can we really build our brand and ourselves in our community to give back while we're creating our candidate pipelines or whatever. So yeah. um, I know that's kind of twofold, but um, again, hadn't really thought of it as we were building the company and building our brand. But to me, like that is something that's really important to myself and my husband too, as we've kind of grown our family and grown all the things is how can we give back to our community? Um, so it's been kind of fun to, to kind of meet with some of these um, groups of potential candidates and, um, you know, there's a lot of homeless shelters or, um, you know, there's a lot of different groups as you know, in in the recruiting world where you can really partner and, and bring our skills and our expertise to be able to help those. And, and in turn, hopefully you grow your candidate pool or, um, you know, are able to give back in different ways. So I, I does that answer that. your question? I think yeah, so. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's really, just, yeah. Well, as you said, it's it could been be fun. Yeah. yeah, it's going in the community. It's potentially yes. even, you know, maybe partnering with resume writers, right? If you don't have yep. the time internally to do it, like, however it can happen, you can do it digitally, nationwide across LinkedIn, yep. you could do it in your own backyard, your own community. Uh, it's it's brilliant, because it, yeah. it, it's it shows people that you're invested. And if you're gonna do yep. this, like, you gotta be you gotta go, in. you gotta yeah, do it. You gotta yeah. be all in like you can't. That's where on, in full transparency, anyone that's kind of struggled, maybe going through our program, they're not all in on recruiting. Yeah, you have to self, be. Like what you have to do. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's what I got to help people understand. Like, are you in it first? Yes. Right? Are you willing to do this? Because I've had people talk, I've, I've talked about partnerships or split recs and all that. They're kind of like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to get my own yeah. business. I'm like, well, you're not creating revenue. So no. what, what are we doing here? Right. Yeah. Like you, you got to just attack this thing and get scrappy. Mm -hmm. Right. And just give to give and like truly yeah. get into that mindset. And the market is going to give you the answers in return. Right. Your partner. Yeah. Sometimes your partners will give you the most honest feedback, which is yes. super helpful of like, you have you do this? Have you thought about that? Plus, then they're also fighting for you and they're doing business development for you. Mm -hmm. Right. In a sense. And so like, yeah. like, that's just that multiplier effect of how many people can you kind of get speaking on your behalf? Right. Where you only get that by just giving, giving, giving and, and giving something that's valuable, that's needed. And as an agency, you're recognizing your value and what yep. you have to offer to the market. And that is right. one of the that is the first thing I teach and try to coach recruiters, owners, salespeople, whatever. Recruiters, like, what is your value? Do you know? Because yeah. if you yeah. don't, I, nothing I do is going to help. Yeah, like it's not going to click until you understand that and you feel that because that's what's going to resonate. All the tactics right. don't matter if you don't have that. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah, so. it's been fun. That's been that probably the partnerships and like even, um, you know, some of the groups that I've gotten in, like I, I that's just something I never expected. Starting this yeah. is just like that different because, again, it wasn't something that was really promoted like that when like when we were at Aerotech, you just kind of did your meetings and you ran around and I don't really know. The but happy hour and at the yeah, red zone. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Try not to have Rex watch um, and all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, so it's been cool. And I, I talk about that a lot with my team. I actually had a meeting this morning that I was talking to somebody about it. We're actually going to, um, 
uh, do a couple different sponsorships for different like women um, in leadership events and stuff next year. Um, and it's just, you know, that that might not get me the business right away, but it's just I, to me, it's more important, right? It's giving back to to people um, that we didn't necessarily always have that. And and it's not a bad thing. It's that doesn't make Aerotech bad. It's just it was a different mindset of like where uh, money was spent in partnerships. So completely. Yeah. And I will, I will re- reiterate that. I think both of us have expressed, you know, here, but also offline, there's a ton of appreciation for getting the chance at Otay, getting the training, building Absolutely. those habits. I mean, mm-hmm. it is, I feel like it's a cheat code, honestly, Yeah, being on our own now. It's just like, you know, there's still a ton of things to figure out, right? It's always still right. a game of whack-a-mole, but like you do, you appreciate <laughs> what they gave you. And it's just like, you just like, we're trying to figure it out, but man, internalized process. I mean, the Clark 12 years ago, had none of this, none of the discipline, the understanding, the knowledge, like right. just the reps, kind of just that training ground. And it's yeah, it's amazing. But it's just they're big corporate, right? They have they're at a different stage. And that is what's fun also starting your own thing. It's like right. whoa, this is a wide open ocean of possibilities. Right. And then you gotta kind of figure out like what actually makes sense and what your own boundaries right. are. And that is a challenge. But once you break through and you can, you're able to kind of survive and stay afloat during that. I mean, it starts to get a little bit easier, a little bit easier, and then it's, it's kind of all clicks, and it's just a it's a beautiful thing. And then you're really like, okay, I'm planting seeds every single yeah. day, and I'm here yeah. long term. And to your point, the community is going to love that. Like, right. this is a small company, you know, small boutique firm, local that's planting seeds, and like they're here to stay. Like right. I said, this is going to shift all that your yeah. way. So it's just yeah. I think for anyone listening, just really smart approach and just really something worth considering like if you're going to be right. all in here's ways to be all in right yeah and then i think realizing too like being such a small business like we don't have all the resources right out of out of the gates right like we're growing where we moved into an office last year um i learned a lot the first year of bringing on you know we just had the rpo um before this year and and taking on a contingent workforce and uh my husband and I are funding. I'm 100% owner of the company, so um, you know when you talk about cash flow and and floating payroll and workers comp and you know I was I kind of chuckled to myself when you talked about the burdens because um, I you know there's some things that I'm like oh now I know why we had 30% burdens right because <laughs> yeah. um, because that money has to come from somewhere um, yeah. so it's just it's been um, a learning a learning curve too of um, where you spend your time and your money and and where we can you know I can't give a lot of money right now into the community but I can give my time um, what what little time we we all have left. Um, um, and making sure that, you know, we're, we're showing up where we need to. So, yeah. And for everyone listening, I mean, I think we'll all resonate with this. That's sometimes what it means the most Yes. to people is when they see that. So it's like, if you're thinking, oh, I don't have the money. It doesn't, people value the time. No. More than, the, people value a fat chat. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but the time is just like, there's something so real about it where people are like, wow, you're raising a family you know, have, have businesses, all that. And you're still doing this like that sticks more than anything else. Yeah. Um, so there, there's it's good, you know, that's always something to think about. You know, as people listening, they're like, all right, how do I build my own agency and sales? Like, yeah. That's a, that's just a great one. Right. It's not as, it's not just about the perfect, you know, outreach message or call to action or whatever else. Right. It's just old school, traditional, like this is the recruiter part, a digital recruiter. Yep. Like, yeah, it, it's that's why it's both. It's not just one or the other. Um, yeah. So. If you're thinking of starting an agency, you got to 100% bet on yourself. That's one thing I've uh, like so many times this year, you know, I'm crying on my couch one night and my husband's like, oh, gosh, here we, you know, and it's like, well, I still believe in what we're doing. And I still believe, um, you know, in myself. And I, it took me a while to be OK with yeah. saying that out loud, because I think, you know, in a lot of these roles. Um, and you know, some of the training I've gotten at Aerotech, it's, you don't always say those things or you don't always, you know, I don't know, whatever. So it's like, yeah, to be okay with like, Hey, I, we're going to rock this and we're going to do this. And, um, it's not going to be easy, but you have to believe in yourself and know that you're going to do the reps. You're going to make the calls. You're going to do all those things. Um, and it's fun. It's not easy every day. I still don't have the stress I have. <laughs> which is kind of crazy. I say that a lot to my husband, but, and even other people, I'm like, I don't have the stress that I had at Aerotech, which goes to show how much um, expectation I think there was. But um, even though my name and in, in our literal family um, is on the line for this company to work, um, you know, it's, it's fun though. So. 
Absolutely. It, it makes it so much more worthwhile, yeah. right, to get paid first versus last and just kind of be part of something that you can mold. Um, right. And kind of right. talk to a client, yeah, I can switch these terms or we can do this and just being yes. creative. I love that. Like, I love yeah. that ability. It's fun. I have learned more in two years than I learned in the last decade. Yes. Uh, yeah. before. And I learned a decent amount, a lot of what not to do the decade before, uh, a couple things of what to do, but it's yeah. just, yeah, you're just, you're out there. Like it's just you. And as you build that and you make it other owners, hiring managers, there's a certain level of respect yeah. that's earned. You can't just, it can't be given. It has to be earned. And that's where I think it starts to really get fun, which I, I'm going to assume a little bit is probably why you were able to grow this year. Uh, yeah. there's all that. Cause that kind of keeps building and building and it just wins. They, they're going to go back to you. Cause you're just, you kind of made it at that level. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I get asked a lot too, you know, why did you take on the contingent space? Cause it's not easy. Um, yeah. I, it's, you know, all of the things it's, it's fun. I've realized, you know, I didn't, um, you learn. Yeah, I've learned a lot. You know, I think at the end of my aerotech career, I thought I hated the industry that we in, we're in. And I think in, instead, I just needed Ooh. a change of scenery, right? Um, I've actually found I'm super passionate about the candidate experience and how are we showing up and partnering. Um, so it's been kind of fun to your point of like doing it our way. And uh, there's a lot of sim similarities there. But I've talked about kind of some of the things that we've changed. But the reason I really decided to take on an agency is so that we could be nimble for our clients. So doing the RPO, great model. Um, we've talked yeah, about talk it a about lot. That. We, we yeah. can definitely talk about it more. Um, but I think not everybody wants the, the RPO setup. Um, so really an RPO and um, everybody does it. I think of kind of the same, kind of different. And it kind of depends what works for you in your market. But um, for us, it's uh, largely retainer based. So you're paying for our our time and commitment to, um, you know, selling your company and, and recruiting for your company versus per placement. All right. Welcome back. Brief technical delay for the FedEx or Amazon truck arriving and one of our dogs <laughs> Sorry. barking. No, I, I wasn't going to call it anyone. It, it could be me. Uh, I heard my dog earlier, so I'm sure someone that, that, that piped in. Uh, but I, I want to touch on this topic. This is, this is I think, really important. And yeah. something a lot of recruiters don't know about, definitely not a lot of companies. Yes. But you've been big on the RPO model. If you yep. want to kind of just give a, a little explainer kind of what that is, and then we'll kind of just have a discussion on it. Because I think it's fascinating. It's something we do at our agency too. Um, yep. We'll love to kind of get your take on it. Yeah. So, yeah, again, when I started all of this, um, May 2021, June 2021, I had no idea what the RPO was. I started contract recruiting um, and, uh, you know, thinking I could do this for more people. Turns out there's literally a whole RPO world um, that I kind of started to study and, and get involved in. Um, so really, um, we just started. It, it works kind of you, I'm stumbling a little bit because it's set up how we do it is probably a little bit different per industry or per skill set, right? So really in the RPO model, the, the goal is you're probably hiring or have a lot of hiring. Some people call it a sprint that needs to be done, um, you know, three to six months. Uh, we try to do more like the six month model. Just I think you see a lot more bang for your buck, um, you know, having that time spent with the agency. Um, but we're really paid on our, our time versus like a per placement. So you think of um, at first I was thinking when I was putting all the model together, I was like, there's no way that people are going to pay this. Right. Like they're not going to pay for for this to make sense for my time and their time, but you really start doing the math. And if you're hiring either, you know, say you have 30 welders that you need to go hire by, you know, the next six months, cause you're, you know, opening, opening a second line or you're opening a second shift. And if you're going to not have the time to do it yourself and you're going to hire an agency to do it on a contingent basis where you're paying, you know, that six month contingency fee before you can bring them onto your books, if you do the math, and when I really started doing the math, um, whether it's that or you're hiring them all direct, you're probably really going to have a cost savings moving to an RPO model. Um, not only is it a cost savings, but you also have a consistent recruiter that's, you know, recruiting on your behalf every day. So boots on the street, um, really making sure that that they're sourcing and finding candidates for your positions um, versus the agency model where, you know, they're going to come in and I educate people this on this a lot. Like just because you give me 10 recs, like somebody down the street might be giving us 30, right? So just because 10 is a lot a to you. Percentage. 
Yeah, doesn't mean that like you're going to always be top rank in that in that um, when the recruiters go to allocate their time. So I don't know, RPO model overall, I'm probably not doing a really great job explaining it super fast, but um, I think the dedicated recruiter is huge. Like we really get to know your business, like what you're wanting, what you need, what works, what doesn't work. And overall, it just saves a lot of time. Like we are not focusing on the projects that come up or like Joe Schmo that needs something done, right? Like our job is literally to come in and hire these folks or hire, you know, the amount of people that you're looking for um, and make sure that you get the people um, on board as quickly as possible. And then we can be nimble with, you know, do you just need us sourcing? Do you need us full cycle recruiting? Um, I've had some clients that they're literally like, here's all of these divisions, like go recruit for them. Um, and we hired, you know, over 150 people for that client in nine months. Um, again, because we're focused on just getting those people in the seats, not necessarily all the other things that are going on. So, well, you reduce the friction. The company gets access to the recruiters, the time, right? You're not focused on HR or anything else that sometimes TA and HR departments are stuck with internally. Yep. But then you also externally have all the tools, right? You're covering all that. You're yep. incentivized every hour of every day to go find the candidates. Like, that's just like yep. the one thing. And then you get to save, you know, for a company, you get to save, you know, however much, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% on contingent costs, right? Whatever the yep. pricing is, it is kind of a no brainer, right? 100%. I do think, yeah. do you think some of the challenges are it kind of exposes people don't really plan, like don't have a hiring plan. And like, is that kind of why it's hard to, to understand or like, what are some of the issues that, come with kind of educating the market on the RPO and kind of why it's beneficial for them? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, honestly, I think it's just, um, so people are so used to at this point, I do think our industry gets a bad rap. Like I do think there's a lot of agencies out there, kind of what I just said, we're going to, you know, some people are going to sell you the world and they're going to, you know, I think of even some of the old account managers we used to work with. Yeah. And it's like, you know, just tell them if you don't have capacity to fill this or this maybe isn't in your wheelhouse or whatever. Um, mm. So I think a lot of people are nervous when I come in then and say like, hey, you're going to pay me 10 grand this month to recruit on these. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But like, how do I know you're going to come through? Um, and we get asked that a lot on KPIs and how do you know, um, how do I know you're going to fill this? And, and, um, I, I do think it's a big investment up front. And I think you just, that's where the partnership and the trust has to come in or call my referral or you know, my references or whatever. Um, but I think it's just the education around the model. Um, I think, yeah, people are so used to in the recruiting world being able to pay when somebody starts versus like ahead of the game um, that it's just kind of changing that mindset. So, And it's funny, I mean, we're changing it. It's a lot of people are sick of that model mm -hmm. but it's what they know so, so they tired stick of it. to it yeah right so it's yeah it's a huge it's like it's just a very revealing for introducing new models or sales business development like framing and having case studies and getting this yep. stuff out in front of like linkedin and content right which is i preach all the time of like this is why you want to get out in front of it as often as possible yep. so you're the one in control of educating the market and sharing those stories and you're getting those like potentially early adopters to be like, you know what, this does make sense. Like, yeah, yeah I want to give it a shot, you know? Right. And that's where like LinkedIn content, I love doing that versus having to explain on every call right at the end of the call, like, Oh, this is kind of what we do. And they're like, huh? What? Like, right. I just need right. people. Uh, like, yeah. what is it? You know? So like, this is an example of like yeah, getting out in front of it. You know, Cause I know yeah. there's people on this call, uh, on, excuse me, listening to this podcast that, are creative and want to get creative um, yep. and there's nothing wrong with that but just know that this is going to be the obstacle you run into it's just like right. how are you getting ahead of that right are you creating some collateral some case studies some LinkedIn right. content doing a podcast you know like this like that's that's a way to kind of overcome that and kind of separate yourself uh, yep so yeah you know. and i think it's just like you know and i think this goes back to to our our um, training with, you know, persistence and making sure that we are really understanding our clients and what they're needing. Like, I think the the clients that I've been the most successful with have been the ones too, that they're willing to give me all of the information and vice versa. I'm asking the questions to make sure that it is a good fit because the model is not a, a great fit for everybody. Um, but it's a, a pretty good fit for a lot of companies, depending on their volume that they're hiring for. 
Um, so I think it's just making sure you're asking and, and um, giving examples on the front end or like I've been working with a, a marketing gal right now that she's really going in and trying to create some case studies and and create just even some like visual visualization that it's like, hey, yeah, you're paying X dollars, but let's break it down. And when you actually do the math and can lay that out, um, it's like, oh, gosh, like they're is a big cost savings um, knowing what we spent last year versus like what we could spend if we partnered with the RPO. So well, and, there's and a now, lot of benefits yeah. to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Now's the time, right? It's budget season. So it's, it's a great time yeah. to kind of get out in front with, with all, all that stuff. And yeah, it, it is, it just kind of becomes that, that client education piece. It's not a fit for everyone. It's just doing the digging, like that initial yeah. intake, that initial discovery call, like, not making it about you, but making it about them. Like where are you like, yep. trying to figure out where they're at and what, what does actually make sense? I think, right. I know you're approaching it that way. Cause that's how we were taught yep. and trained. And it's, it's huge. I mean, it bears repeating. People are probably hearing it on every episode that we record because it's that important. Like yep. that's the starting point It's like dig, 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 and just trust that you're going to be able to point them in the right direction. Yep, right? 100%. And then they get to make the choice. So like if they're going to proceed or not, and sometimes it's you, sometimes it's them. Like, that's why we yeah. keep. That's why we keep going, right? Yeah. But like, that's so important. Like, if you're constantly doing discovery the right way, yep. The rest falls into place. The pricing model falls into place. All that other stuff. It's just like, yeah. That's what is like kind of that key initial piece on the sales and BD that I've seen. I don't know if you kind of would agree or kind of see something else, but that's always kind of links back to that, like that discovery piece. Yeah, hundred percent. I would agree. Um, and. Yeah, I think overall that's, you know, as I've grown my business, that's why we decided to to add in the agency. And I think this is where I was going when uh, the doorbell rang earlier. But um, just because it's not for everybody, I would say it's a good fit for a lot of folks, um, depending on um, how they're using their contingent workforce right now or why they're using. Those are probably the best two questions, um, you know, how or, or why are you using. Um, but, um, you know, being able to add in the contingent side for us has allowed us to help those folks that maybe it's not, you know, a benefit right now, or it doesn't make sense right now. Um, so, you know, it still allows us to be able to, to service those folks and um, clients and make sure that, that we're able to be nimble with them as they grow and have changes as well. So. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of people are, they're not ready for that because they need the contingent model, yep. but they've been burned before. Yes. Right. So I guess kind of, what are your thoughts on, you know, say I'm a hiring manager at a company, listen to this sort of manufacturing plan or anything else. Yeah. And I've been burned by an agency. How, what kind of, what, what would be your recommendation on like, hey, like kind of how to vet an agency, like going forward? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I think, yeah, doing your research a little bit, I think before you just, I, I go on so many meetings where, you know, oh yeah, we'll just add you to the list. And it's like, well, interview me. Like, why are you wanting to work with me? Like what, you know, what do you need out of the agency? Just, um, you, cause at the end of the day, yes, you need butts in seats, but you also need those butts to stay in those seats. Right. And you need right. the right people in those. Um, and you're not going to, if you're partnering with every agency in the market, you're not going to, to build those relationships and, and get those folks that you actually need because you're just trying to fish for everybody. Right. Um, and so, I would really encourage people, um, you know, ask the questions, like figure out like, why, why are we hiring like this? Or, or maybe get with somebody and, and kind of do like a deep dive on your, your own hiring practices. And it's like understanding and making sure that you are partnering with the agency that has the, the same um, mindset. Um, kind of what we talked about earlier in this podcast, like, I don't want to work with everybody, right? Like, if you tell me you have 10 vendors or 10 lists of of people you can go call. Like I probably don't really want to work with you. Um, but the benefit of working with me is we are a small firm. We don't want to partner with everybody. Right. So you're going to get a lot more attention from a smaller firm, even though I might not have this great, crazy resources like an aerotech does. Um, so I think just taking your time to kind of step back and, and understand what, what you're needing out of those partners and making sure those partners are coming to the table for you. Um, and if they're not, cut them. Like if they're not bringing you candidates or they're not doing the things that you need them to do um, to ultimately grow your business and, and find those people that you need to do the work so you guys can get paid, you know, why do you have them on the list? So I've seen that a lot on the consulting side. I've done a couple of consulting gigs this year 
um, where, you know, just there's no control really around spend or around why are we using these agencies or there's just no guardrails at all. Um, and I know I'm, I'm now going off on this whole tangent, but, um, you know, I, I get passionate about it that it's like, why, why do you want to work with all of these people? Or, you know, what's the benefit to you if, you know, they only bring you one candidate every once in a while or, or whatnot. So I think it's just understanding what you need. Yeah. It's like, well, why, you know, 10 vendors is 10 times the emails. I mean, it sounds like a nightmare to me. <sighs> yes. Right. Yeah. I just want why my one expert, I want my one mechanic. I want my, you know, right. my one person that I go to for, you know, taxes and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. I don't want a bunch of different people to right. switch around. And the best clients right. are going to have that mindset. They just yes. might not believe that it, it, it exists on the agency mm-hmm. side. And that's kind of where yeah. your job is, is to kind of show them that it can exist, that, that it's possible. Right. And then that's any owner, agency owner side, yeah. especially something that's as, let's say, it can be as easily commoditized as agency yeah. recruiting. And I think like not being afraid to ask for references or like referrals. Um, I mean, I have, you know, even though we've only been doing this um, a couple of years on my own, like I have, you know, you know, probably 50 people right now that I could say um, not all of them maybe have relevant, you know, real specific experience from maybe working with higher DSM, but they, they know me, they trust me. Um, you know, I don't know, 50 might be high. I just threw that out, but it's, yeah. you know, I think just like not being afraid to call those people and kind of do like a character um, reference check almost as well. So it's, I think that's going to tell you a lot too. Absolutely. No, it's huge. And, and one thing we talked about, you know, you talked about like the big firm, smaller firm is a lot of times what people don't realize is you might have the big firm, but if you have up to even what, 50, 100, sometimes even 200, 300 positions, that local office is the one handling it. Mm -hmm. So there's not a huge difference on the number of recruiters. Sometimes smaller firms are actually going to give you more recruiters looking at your rec than a bigger firm. And like, that's a huge myth that people sometimes don't understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we've definitely, and that's one thing I talk about a lot in all of my meetings is like, yeah, I mean, if you're willing to take a chance on us, like we're, we're all in, right? Like we're trying to build this thing and um, find those folks that want to work with us. So um, I think the more, yeah, you can just lean into that, but yeah, that's huge. So, well, let's, in terms of kind of where you, I mean, you grew this year and it was a tough for year, but mm-hmm. for people that are starting their recruitment agency or maybe started this year, or like, you know, whatever that oh, gosh. I know, right? Yeah. What is, you know, what's a piece of advice or two that you would give them? It's like, man, I wish I knew this May, 2021, uh, but yeah. I know it now, but like, what, what, what would that be? Oh gosh, I could talk about this for a while. Um, I think the one thing I have been extremely lucky and I didn't really realize this, I think until I had to start kind of figuring out like insurance and some of the stuff on my own. Um, I have a pretty good network of folks that I just, I'm not afraid to ask the questions. Um, so ask a lot of questions. You're not going to know everything. And I think being, a, you know, being, uh, confident enough in yourself to know that you're, going to figure it out no matter what happens, but being smart enough to not be afraid to ask the questions, um, finding a mentor. So there's a couple of people actually, I don't know, you might know, I might not from Aerotech that are started, like have started their own firms and they're probably, you know, a year or two behind me, um, that they've reached out to me from posts that I've had on, on LinkedIn or whatever. Um, and you know, one of them, we have a monthly call that we literally just sit there and sometimes it's just venting or sometimes it's like, Hey, what did you do for this? But we've really been able to bounce ideas off of each other, even though we're not in the same state. Um, just, you know, the running a, an agency on the business side is a lot, especially if it's on the contingent side. Um, so I think just, you know, not being afraid to ask the people that, you know, but then not being afraid to answer. Like I had a call with somebody that, uh, he runs an RPO in Chicago and uh, has gone from like zero to 21 million in five years. And I was super nervous to get on the phone and call from him and, or, and uh, talk to him. But, you know, we had a great conversation and, and he's, um, a great resource. So I think just, um, that would be my hundred percent biggest piece of advice is ask, ask questions, get the right vendors. We've, um, you know, gone through a lot of learning this year why, you know, we wanted to just, you know, I, I only know, knew what I 
new, right? When it comes to like the business insurance and workers comp and stuff is probably the biggest thing when you're, especially when you're in like the manufacturing construction space, like we have a lot of our contingent work, uh, work in. But I think the biggest learning lesson for me really this year too, is like, make sure that people understand our industry. Uh, the rec recruiting in industry is a lot different than, um, you know, a clinic or an office or whatever. So um, just making sure that you have the the team and the vendors with you that um, can grow with you and can understand our market and what we need. So uh, absolutely. I mean, call me. That's what I would say is if you have questions, <laughs> I've learned so much this year um, and it's been a ride, but it's, I've learned a ton. So uh, it won't, right. Wouldn't have it any other way. And I, I think it's just great advice, like finding a mentor, asking mm -hmm. questions. A lot of times that'll help you point you in the right direction of vendors and all that. And, people are people you know someone's built a 20 million dollar business 100 Absolutely. million dollar business like they're still just a person uh yeah. at, at the end of the day uh so you know as if you're all in on recruiting people sense that yes. and i think no matter what stage revenue someone's at or whatever if you have that people are always happy to help right i have that yes. people i look up to yeah. people now that look up to me which is crazy to think about. I know. Uh, given kind of the, the past few years and the journey that I've been on, but I'm like, it's it's fun. Yeah. It's like it, it, it just kind of if you have that, there is kind of like the pay it forward, give it back type of yeah, type totally. of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, mindset, and it works. And just having having that humility, right, to know what you know, know what you don't know, in a sense. You yeah. Know, with mentors Absolutely. and everyone else, it's just it it ties it all together, and it, it buys you so much goodwill. Yes. Um, but sometimes yeah. that can be the difference between landing the big client or not. Yeah. Right. Um, so I love yeah. that. Well, as you mentioned, you know, connect with you on LinkedIn, right? Nikki Wallace. Absolutely. We'll, yeah. we'll have the URL on the, on the podcast episode, the link to the website, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. But if you're a recruiter, owner, hiring manager, reach out to Nikki. She's awesome. Um, yeah. And I just, I always I really love to chat. It. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're building. <clears throat> excuse me I, I almost made it the whole time but i gotta be at the end <laughs> it's all right excuse me but it's uh right. again you know connect we're building the ecosystem here you yep. know it's all kind of you know the the rising tides lifts all ships kind of stuff so you know connect with nikki reach out if you have questions um you know i, I love what you're building i'm excited to see Thank kind you. of the journey yeah. continue yeah and keep educating people on rpo i'll keep doing the same as well um i just think it's it's awesome to be innovative and creative and just continue to just slowly but surely change kind of the perspective on agency recruiting in our own little world. So I think that's super important. Absolutely. That's what we can control. So um, I yeah. just appreciate you being here and sharing your story and yeah. your journey. It was awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. It's always fun to chat business and we're, you know, it's almost been a year. So <laughs> yeah, and I was the it's air good, tech story. So it's all good. I know. All good. Well, good. Oh, awesome. Well, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, this will, uh, this will do it for this episode. Um, again, give us five stars, all that love on the little podcast that, that can. Um, and we appreciate that. And connect with Nikki. And good luck with the doggos over there. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time.